Marjorie is a charter member of Trinity Baptist Church. I love to talk about our church. There was a sense among the adults that we needed to form a new church. People wanted to move quickly. And it was set for Friday, June 24th, 1949. Mm. And then we stood in a big circle around that gym and held hands, 94 of us, and prayed our church into being. Mm. We grew really fast. So we Mm. began that first big building that is the end of the parking lot down from Shook. Man, so it was a story of of quick growth immediately and then reacting, needing to... It makes me tired thinking about it, but it also had to be very exciting. Yeah, It was wonderful. Yeah, We were all thrilled. Yeah, And I'll tell you, we grew so fast, we outgrew the Sunday school rooms that we built. Yeah. We were all thrilled. Yeah. And I'll tell you, we grew so fast, we outgrew the Sunday school rooms that we built. Yeah. So from the city of San Antonio, we bought 10 old, decrepit, dirty, (laughs) rusty buses without wheels. And they were carried over here and put on uh, supports. Yeah. around the edge of yeah. that parking lot and up along the fence that's along there. Yeah. Uh, from Buses. Chuck, buses. Yeah. And 10 men's Sunday school classes met in those buses for 13 months. Wow. That means July and August <laughs> and February. My, well, I, I heard a story. Someone mentioned Sunday school in a bus, and I just assumed it was like a church bus that, they had needed space. I didn't realize those were like portable classrooms. But they yeah. were portable classrooms. How and God bless yeah. those men. They wore oh. their suits and ties. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Launched. an in- innovative solution. Uh, innovative solution. It was. Why yeah. not? Yeah, and you, you know. needed time. But how wonderful. My goodness. It was an, it was an exciting yeah. time. Our growth was just huge. Yeah. And in this building, uh, Brother Mac had conceived of the church as a spiritual community. Yeah. So he wanted not only Bible study space. But he thought we should have space for recreation and athletics as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we had a four-lane bowling alley, <laughs> and we had a large skating rink, Yeah. the foundation of which exists there now and is used as a student center. I love that dream, uh, and it was a dream ahead of its time uh, to a church as spiritual community, that the whole, the whole needs of a community, of a family, could be met in and through Right. Uh, the church. And, and, and so further, recreation and spiritual mental health became something. A counseling center eventually started. Oh, absolutely. All of these things. Gym. Yeah. The To further that, though, we also joined. I You know what? I don't even know if this exists anymore. Yeah. Sunday School Athletic Association. I doubt it does. But <laughs> They were yeah. a group yeah. of, of all the churches who wanted to join. Okay. Any Any Christian church, we had Catholics, Lutherans, Methodists, you know, everybody, the whole thing. And we all had uh, softball teams from six years up to the many adult teams, Wow, girls and boys, because they weren't mixed teams, uh, but they were boys' teams and girls' teams and adult teams. Yeah. And so the fun thing was that these college athletes and these men who had played <laughs> ball at any time yeah. in their lives yeah. got to play ball again. Yeah. And, you know, How fun. they were maybe yeah. sort of good and maybe no good, but they didn't care because <laughs> everybody had such fun. When you reach a lot of people and have fun and your family can be together. One, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We now have three sons, and they participated in that yeah. for years. Yeah. And to this day, one of our sons, the yeah. most athletic of one of our yeah. sons, was on a little baseball team. Yeah. And he... He met little boys when he was six and seven and eight, yeah. with whom he is still close friends That's through neat. the Sunday School yeah. Athletic Association. The rule was yeah. you didn't have to be a member of that church, yeah. but you had to attend Sunday school at least twice a month at least to that. play for that church. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, yeah. Uh-huh. That's I wonderful. mean, these people yeah. became Christians or recommitted yeah. 
families. They joined the various churches. Yeah. We played Laurel Heights Methodist and yeah. Christ Episcopal and Our Lady. Did we, of, did we beat those pretty regularly? We think? were winners. <laughs> we were winners. And we had basketball. Yeah. Uh, teams, yeah, and uh, and that continued for a long time because yeah. even when Mac was gone and Buckner was here, by the time Buckner's middle son and ours yeah. were twelve and thirteen, yeah. Um, have you ever heard of disagreeing with the referee at a ball game? <laughs> I've heard others that have done that. Yes, one. Uh huh. <laughs> well, just wait. Your turn's coming. <laughs> well, yeah. One game. Yeah. Buckner and my husband Joe got thrown out of the game. Really? <laughs> they were so upset with the reference. Oh, and they called funny. him out yeah. one time too many. Well, it yeah. is that in that post World War II boom, which I think San Antonio bit it benefited from yeah, that. Of course. Um, yeah. certainly that that was just that was leading edge ministry then. And there was an amphitheater, you already mentioned the bowling alley in the church, the uh roller roller skating rink and amphitheater, right? Mm-hmm. And right. Yeah, what a wonderful thing. Um and and I think that uh, spirit of innovation has shown up in Trinity in many ways to kind of think forward to the needs of the coming generation and how mm-hmm. to meet those. I mean, that's a challenge for the church. But as you look at the history of Trinity, that seems to be there in any number of ways, kind of saying uh, that same spirit looking forward to the next oh, generation. In wonderful ways. And yeah. let me, I made a couple of notes here. Let All me right. just look at my notes and be sure. Oh, um, well, oh, I have a funny thing to tell you about the games first. Sure. You can, you can skip this if you want to, <laughs> but I think it's the funniest thing. What, the, the little children's teams had yeah. names like the many, M-I-N-I-S, the, yeah. the, the little bitty guys that six were the midgets, <laughs> and then the uh, primaries and the juniors and the intermediates. Yeah. But some reporter came here one time, some national reporter, to do an article about our church as yeah. a fast-growing church and innovative. Yeah. And he read down the uh, church bulletin, which s- listed the schedule for practices yeah. for those kids and their softball yeah. game. And in his article, he wrote, they even have a baseball team for midgets. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Slightly misunderstood. But <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? We have had, well, see, that I still really, remember it. I still think that was that funny. That really is funny. We, yeah. But uh, among the innovative things we did, okay, back behind the, yeah. the back wall yeah. of the gym yeah. mm-hmm. was 10 feet of church-owned property. Okay. And then 10 yeah. feet of our property before our garage and so okay. forth. Uh-huh. So in that 10 feet of church-owned yeah. property, we built a Boy Scout hut. Oh, interesting. Huh. Now, who yeah. built the Boy Scout yeah. hut? The men. Yeah. The yeah. men um, who were thought it was a great idea. Yeah. And it was a gorgeous building yeah. with a kitchen interesting. and huh. steps going up to it because it was on uneven land. Yeah, yeah. And so I, as one of the young kids... Got to go, they, you know, it was in the um, winter and it was cold. And so they started kind of before dawn. They gathered their tools and met for coffee and to decide what they're going to do. So my job was to throw wood on the little open fire (laughs) out there. Kept it going. For there, because those those men were great guys. Oh, how fun. They had tripods that they hung their big coffee pots on. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of fun. That's neat. That's I do really remember neat. that. I had to write it down to re- so yeah. I'd be sure to remember it. And the other, the other experience. Yeah. And here again, it's how we all enter in. Yeah. And I think that we see this today because yeah. I have some examples later on to yeah. tell about yeah. what's happening today where we all enter in. But our pews for our first little building yeah. did not arrive on Tuesday or Wednesday <laughs> before the Sunday when yeah. they were supposed uh-huh. to. They arrived late Friday. Wow. So all, of course, most people still worked. Yeah. The women and the kids and men, as soon as they could get here, yeah. brought their crowbars and wrenched those crates open <laughs> and got those pews got them out. Got by Sunday. And yeah. here was a big concrete floor yeah. with the platform at one end and garage folding doors on yeah. the other end. And we unloaded those pews. Wow. And all day yeah. Saturday we have pictures of it. There yeah. may be a picture in the yeah. in the history book. Interesting. We have pictures yeah. of the men uh, with their. Everybody brought his own drill. You brought whatever tools you had, <laughs> and yeah. they set up those 
pews and drill them into the concrete floor as best they could. It was going to be there for Sunday, huh? By yeah. golly, it was. <laughs> and it was there. And we yeah. had a wonderful worship service on Sunday morning, that, complete with pews and a clean floor. <laughs> I mean, I don't even imagine how late we were there that yeah. night. Yeah. I know it was into the night yeah. because... Um, Word went around the next day as people yeah. were driving down Mulberry or yeah. up Mulberry or whichever way they were going. They're having a dance in that building on Saturday <laughs> night. <laughs> Those, are they Baptists? They're dancing on Saturday night. And here night. we yeah. were bobbing up in and 49, down, yeah. <laughs> attaching the pews to the floor. That's really funny. I thought that was funny. Well, too. there is a certain, um, yeah, that come together spirit of starting something new is is just an exciting thing. And you hope that same spirit is captured and continues on, but there's 75 nothing... 75 years later, we're still, yeah. we still come together for things. No, it is, to, for work days and different things, and you're, you're constantly trying to keep that same energy going. That's very, very exciting. So, Marjorie, we're continuing our conversation about some of the early days of Trinity and, and in our beginnings. Um, we've talked about uh, Brother Mac and Dr. McBurney, who was here, the first pastor of Trinity, and then... Uh, 10 or 12 years later, uh, about 10, 10, 10? It's, yeah. it was 10 and, mm -hmm. um, hired or called, right. Mm -hmm. We call, we don't hire in Baptist life, um, Buckner Fanning, which of course then became, um, kind of synonymous with Trinity Baptist church and Buckner Fanning in many wonderful ways. Can you tell us some about Buckner's call and his coming here to the church? Yes, Buckner had been in the evangelistic world. Yeah. It was the during the Billy Graham evangelistic, the youth evangelism, youth yeah. revivals and so forth yeah. that started, I think, probably soon after the war yeah. in the mid-40s and continued yeah. um, into the mid-50s and late 50s. And Buckner had never pastored a church. But um, for some reason, the people on the pastor search team... Yeah. And I say for some reason, isn't that the silliest <laughs> thing? I'm here, I'm 85, I know how God works. <laughs> yeah. God got Buckner's name hmm. to the people on our pastor yeah. search team. And they were very leery about yeah. calling someone who had never been a pastor, no experience. He was pretty I mean, young, evangelists, right? they yeah. come and go. He was 30, 33. 30. Wow. 33. And... Uh, Finally, they just said, well, we have to talk to him. We keep thinking about him yeah. while we talk about all these other people. So a fellow who was in sales needed to be in Dallas anyway, where Buckner lived, okay. uh -huh. and called on Buckner and, you know, explained who we were. Buckner had heard of us, um, said, I've never been a pastor. I don't want to pastor a church. God called me to be an evangelist and, you know, no. Yeah. And so... Um, this man said, well, at least promise you'll think about it and pray mm. about it. He said, well, I will. I will yeah. think about it and pray about it. I honestly will. And, and I don't think I'll do it, but I will think <laughs> about it and pray about it. So he called his wife when uh, this man left his office and yeah. told Martha about the visit. And she said, oh, goodness, because she was very firmly situated in Dallas herself. Yeah, yeah. And she didn't want to leave either. Huh. You know, some people are not easily moved. I understand and so, <laughs> that very well. <laughs> anyway. You've been uh, in San Antonio your whole life, right? <laughs> yes, I have, absolutely. You don't think I'd leave this church, do you? <laughs> anyway, um, wh whatever place played music on their bells in yeah. the public played San Antonio Rose. <laughs> and Buckner thought, that's a sign. Oh, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> he wondered interesting. if it yeah. was, he thought it was. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh -huh. But he told Martha they had to at least think about it. Yeah. So they came and interviewed. Yeah. We went and interviewed them. Yeah. And the upshot was that that fall they came. Yeah, wow. Buckner had performed one wedding in and, his life. And that was? That was somewhere in Dallas. Or the, the that was what? 62 when 59 59 I'm sorry 59 so Buckner came, came yeah at the end of yeah. October in 59 okay, so right at the and the years. week yeah. after his first sermon in view of a call yeah Joe and I got married oh really wow and we had been engaged yeah. uh -huh. uh, all summer and people kept saying to me well who's going to perform your wedding surely you're going to have brother Bob I said I don't know yeah 
If we have a pastor by then, our new pastor yeah. will perform your wedding. Well, you don't know him. No, but we will know him. We will be here a long yeah. time. We're going to affirm our new pastor yeah. by having him perform our wedding. Yeah. So fortunately, he was in place. Yeah. He came down. Yeah. It. I mean, <laughs> we, I must say, we had to yeah. schedule our wedding yeah. after the Baylor Texas game. Of course. Which, of thanks course. be to God, was in Austin <laughs> that weekend on Saturday at two o'clock. So our wedding was at eight that evening. So Buckner yeah. and Joe and everybody could get oh, down that's here really from funny. the game <laughs> for the wedding. Um, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> So was that was that his first wedding here? That was his first Trinity wedding here was, and only yeah. his second wedding ever. My goodness. And, and it, it took. Well, and yeah. he did a yeah. wonderful job. Yeah. He said wonderful things yeah. that we still think about and That's remember. That's special. It was yeah. wonderful. That's special. So going on 65? Yes, ish. sir. All right. 65 so, this November so 7th, Buckner's second Sunday those here. Those vows work. That's <laughs> wonderful. That's wonderful. Wow. Thank and you. so the church then continued to... Really thrive through yes. throughout Buckner's. Time okay, now here. here's yeah. the funny story. Yeah. I, yeah. D- I do want to tell this. And uh, Buckner and Martha are both with the Lord now, and I'm just yeah. praying that they're going to laugh at this because <laughs> it's a funny story. Yeah. And it's certainly uh, yeah. the the years after this belayed any <laughs> impression this might give. When Buckner came as an evangelist, he had 14 sermons. Okay, that was all yeah. he ever That's needed. What you need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they were good ones. And he wasn't used to writing sermons. Yeah. So about the third run-through of those 14 sermons, yeah. and it took a while. 14 is how many? Three months or so, mm-hmm. three and a half months. Yeah. So after nearly a year, somebody suggested Buckner get some new sermons. <laughs> <laughs> and it was yeah. it was a challenge for him yeah, that's, to, yeah. to begin thinking uh, yeah. per week rather than per set of two weeks in a different place yeah, each time. Yeah, that is. That's a big, and the pastoring and everything else, that's a that's a big shift. Yeah, but But uh, he ended up, so he stayed 42 42 years? years. Okay, so it worked out. It worked out. It worked out yeah. beautifully, and we were so glad to have yeah. him. The other thing I have yeah. to say, and this is not, um, yeah. you're not from Waco, so this won't apply to you or Dallas. <laughs> But when the first couple of Sundays we heard him, we thought, oh, dear, how can we stand that Central Texas twang? (laughs) He's virtually a Yankee from way up north. Well, he was. It's a a difference, isn't it? Yeah. It it is very different. Yeah. We quickly got used to it. And, of course, we loved it. (laughs) We just loved Buckner and Martha from the very beginning and still love his kids, still keep in touch with his middle son who's here now. Yeah. And uh, they were wonderful. They were a wonderful family, and they occupy a big place in our hearts oh and and we'll be telling uh throughout this we'll be telling quite a few buckner stories of course and and telling some of those well thank you for sharing that hey if you enjoyed this clip and want to watch the full episode please click below don't forget to like and subscribe for all other episodes